Darum, Estland, Norwegen, Schweden, Dänemark, Niederlande, Belgien, Großbritannien, Irland. Judge Francis Vidal. We are covering here in 1963 to hear the trial of the escape member of the Nazi party, Dr. Joseph Mengele. We will now welcome the prosecution to make their opening statement in this very important trial in the history of the world. Prosecution, are you ready for the opening statement? Yes, you are. The privilege of opening the first trial in history for crimes against peace and of the world imposed a grave responsibility. The wrong which we seek, um, Kahneman, punish, we have so calculated the mangling, the de devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored because they cannot survive for their being repeated. The four great nations flushed with victory and stopped the angry state that heard of vengeance and voluntarily submit their captive enemies to judgment of the law is one of the most significant tributes that power has ever paid to reason. We want this record for the future generation to know not only what our generation suffered, but also that our suffering will result of the crimes, crimes against the law of the people, which the people of the word of unheld and will continue the future of uphold. To uphold by international cooperation is not based merely on military alliances, but grounded and firmly grounded in the rule of law. Defense This morning, Mengele said, I had a deep sense of guilt and a deep sense of shame about the things which were done to the Jews in Germany. And then at the time when the terror and violence began, I was involved in a strong conflict with my conscience. I felt, I could almost say, that a great injustice was being done. However, I did not feel guilty in respect to the indictment against me. Here that is, that according to the indictment, I was guilty of crimes against humanity because I signed the directives for carrying out laws which had been issued by superior offices, laws that had to be made so that the Jews would not be entirely deprived of their rights and so that they would be given some legal protection, at least in regard to compensation and settlement. I am admitting a guilt against myself, a moral guilt, but not a guilt because I signed the directives for carrying out the laws. In any event, 
not the guilt against humanity. That is, that is all your honor. Prosecution, you can call your first witness. Prosecution, call Stephanie Wallace. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Stephanie Wallace. Do, so do solemnly swear. Do solemnly sit, swear. To tell the whole truth. To tell the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help you God. So help you God. Can you please state your name for the record? Stephanie Wallace. Stephanie, explain to me what happened from the day you met the doctor named Leah at I was only nine years old at the time. It was the third week in Auschwitz. I was working with a group of others on digging large, long holes. At that time, I had no idea what the purpose of them was for. While I was digging that day, there was a man that walked by with two other Nazi leaders. There was a dark sinister laying under, underlying to them. I thought nothing of it until I think it was a month or two later when during the middle of the night I heard voices coming from the bunker over. I, the only one up, looked out the window and saw that sinister man. I quickly hid under one of the top bunk mattresses. After a while, they came in our bunk and took the twins one by one. Lining them up, one of the Nazis found out I was hiding and ended up, and ended up taking me and my sister. That was very traumatizing story, Stephanie. I understand that the, your twin sister was used in horrifying experience by Dr. Mangale. Would you care to share any of this with us? Yes, I was used as a control, so nothing was done to me. But my sister, Mangale, did horrible things to her. He would inject dyes into her eyes because he was trying to change the color of them. Eventually, my sister died because of infection after the doctor had amputated one of her arms. They were about to kill me and dissect me in what must have been January of 1925, when the Red Army came and murdered the king. That was a very horrifying story, Stephanie. What would you have possibly driven Dr. Joseph Langley to such things? That's Good morning, Ms. Wallowitz. Do you need anything? No, I am fine. I would like to ask you a few, a few questions regarding your life at Auschwitz. Is that okay? Of course. From your story, it sounded like you were put through some hard labor at the camp. Would you like to admit that this is true? Oh, yes. So when Dr. Mengo came and took you into his care, he took you away from all the labor, hard labor, is that correct? It was also documented from other survivors from Auschwitz that under Dr. Mangala's care that his patients received much better care than other inmates. They were fed but much better. The guards were kinder. Mangala himself was also reported to have given out candy and many up to many of the children. Is all of this true, Ms. Wallowitz? Judge Biddle, would these acts of kindness be carried out by such man as cruel to the prosecution would like to, you to see and believe that Joseph Mangle is any doctor Mangle did done or was done only through fear of death from Hitler himself. That is it.
Hitler, you don't know what he's done. He's done terrible things to those people. I don't know why you're hiring him. I've heard you have a very impressive resume, Mangala. Indeed. Uh, there's a problem. Uh, Auschwitz, our, our doctor, has, has fallen out. Would you be able to take over for him? Of course. So, uh, I will need you to exterminate the Jews and complete my final solution. Very well. Anything else you would like to do is on your own. Thank you, sir. Repeat after me. I am state your name. I am Joseph Mangala. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To tell the whole truth. To tell the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help you God. So help you God. Let me sit down. Can you please state your name for the record? Joseph Mangala. According to the definition of crimes against humanity, which are in short inhumane acts committed against a civil population in violation of a country's domestic law, Joseph Mengele, you may have very well committed these. Let's go into further detail about the evidence stacked against you. You exposed the prisoners of Auschwitz to various traumas, did you not? No, they were just harmless experiments. Most of them were Jewish or gypsy children, sometimes made up of twins or family members, were they not? They were. You performed both physical and psychological experiments. They were horrendous experiments consisting of put into pressure chambers, tested with drugs, pasteurized, frozen to death, put into gas chambers, being shot into cold blood, twins being put to sleep, and while asleep, dissected and dismembered of limbs, organs, and other body parts of your own use of study. Surgeries performed without anesthesia, transfusion of blood between twins, isolation, endurance, reaction to various stimuli, injections with lethal germs, sex change operations, and incestuous impregnations. Robert J. Lifton, as a Nazi doctor, quotes you, Joseph Mengele, away with this shit, unquote. You say, as all the people from a transport who had previously been selected for work, but instead are sent to be gassed as a blanket punishment for your shooting of a woman and her daughter. What do you have to say about that, Dr. Mengele? None of that is true. Then tell me why there's a picture of you in a building at Auschwitz with other doctors and helpers with body parts on the wall in the background. Is this you, Joseph? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution rests. Thank you. Defense, please present your cross-examination and evidence to the court. Thank you, Your Honor. Joseph, were you appointed doctor of Auschwitz by Hitler? Yes. This was after the original doctor of Auschwitz fell ill, correct? Correct. 
Did Hitler need you? Is he pressuring you to be the doctor? Yes. Do you feel that if you wouldn't have said yes to Hitler, you would have been killed by him? Yes. What did Hitler tell you to do while in Auschwitz? He told me he wanted to carry out his final solution. To put the ones that were physically capable of work to work and to exterminate the rest. Thank you. That is all, Judge. Prosecution, next witness. Prosecution has no more witnesses. We rest. Thank you, ma'am. Defense, any more witnesses? The defense has no more witnesses, Your Honor. The prosecution, followed by the defense, will now close the trial, and a verdict will be made by myself after. Prosecution, you may close. Your Honor, you have heard all of the experiments and evidence that Joseph Mengele did in fact commit crimes against humanity and was also attempting to flee to Argentina. So he must have felt guilt for what he did to those people. The defense argued that Mengele was only acting out Hitler's orders, but in fact, Mengele was not forced to do the horrible human experimentations. Hitler only asked him to be a doctor at Auschwitz. He never told him to perform experiments on the twins or any other people. That's all, Your Honor. The defendant was only acting under the orders that he received from Hitler. He had no choice. Hitler would have killed him if he didn't follow his orders at Auschwitz. He was only doing the order, what he was told to do. Please take this in consideration when you determine your verdict. Thank you, Your Honor. Based on the evidence of testimony,